It's my pleasure now to announce our speaker, all the way from the Everglades, Gator Country. We hope a gator didn't get him. But I'll tell you this much, this man is going to speak from his heart. And he'll speak about his heart right away quick because he had an issue with his heart. <laughs> it didn't quit, but uh, we're thankful for that. I'm going to disappear. It'll Thank take a while. You. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. I found uh, Lethbridge to be a little bit uh, cool this morning, not to mention uh, windy. But isn't it good that God chose us to give us another day uh, to breathe and to bring praise to his name and to glorify him? And we should bow our heads and pray for the needs of our church. And when I think of church, I'm thinking worldwide. Uh, we would pray for Haiti and the devastation there. I don't know that we could fathom what's going on there uh, unless you've been there and understand the nature <clears throat> of their battle. They have barely recovered. They have not recovered from the last earthquake and then a hurricane goes by to sort of insult them on top of that. And then when you bring up the word Afghanistan and you think about people that are running for their lives today and trying to get on a plane, trying to get out of that country before it implodes into a disastrous uh, bloodbath for Christians and Muslims alike. I don't think we understand that there's quite a battle going on between the, the Muslim groups and they're quite willing to kill each other as well. So I would invite you as long as well as praying for the needs of our church and Gloria who is struggling a bit today and others that are uh, finding the physical battles a little bit much as well as the fact that uh, many are, are, on, are gone and we pray that our pastor has a refreshing time away. Pastors need to get away on a regular basis at least once a week. <laughs> you do allow him to have a day off a week, don't you? Okay, well, yeah. Well, let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before you as needy people. We feel the weight. We feel the crush of our spirit for the world around us as we see what's going on. And so many lives are at stake today. And we pray that the ones that you have been guarding because they love you would be found safe. But even so, Lord Jesus, you have come to take us home if the time is right, and even if it glorifies you, and if it, being a martyr brings glory to your name, so be it. But we pray, Jesus, that you would protect those little home churches that have been built around Afghanistan, and where the gospel is preached, may that word still become loud and clear, even to the Taliban, that they would hear the message of love and forgiveness from a heavenly Father who sent his son to die on a cross for them and was raised again to life and now sits with you in heaven, Lord Jesus. We pray your blessing upon them as they stand true to your word and stand true to their faith. We pray for those who are needing a shelter in Haiti and needing clean water and food and the struggle is real. I pray, Jesus, for my brothers and sisters there that they would find comfort in your presence and food Provisions provided through your hands, Father. And for our own church, Lord, you know the battles that we face. We pray for victory in each and every Christian home, that they might be found strong and true in their faith, able to stand as a true witness without wavering, without compromising to this world that insists that we are molded in the image that they have. I pray we would rather be molded in your image, Jesus, and that our light would shine brightly in this community and around the world. So I pray that you'd bless us as we've gathered together for your uh, worship and for the word that would be opened to us today. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I authorize you to speak the word Amen. When something should touch your heart that the Holy Spirit brings to your attention, I'd invite you to do that. It would not stop the service. It would not hurt anybody's feelings. 
It might even be an encouragement to someone sitting beside you. You want to practice it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can even put your hands up. No one's going to be insulted by that. I noticed that during the song about putting your hands up in worship, a couple of you kind of had it, had it there, but it's, I was sitting near the camera. I didn't want to be too... <laughs> anyway, life doesn't go always the way we have it planned, does it? Thank you for that response. I'll occasionally ask you questions just to see if you're awake or paying attention. Got a big sermon here. Oh, you, I can't wait to tell it to you. You know, I feel really bad. I, I almost borrowed a water bottle that I saw out there on the table. <laughs> but I saw that it was a, a, a pretty popular item on the registry for voting, uh, bidding on, and and I understand, and I'm, I'm going to try to be careful. What you're hearing in my voice is another unplanned event in my life. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> back uh, in June this year, <clears throat> we, I had a meeting uh, scheduled. And it was actually to have a coffee with some friends. And it's, it's always been a time where we could be encouraging each other. And I often uh, <clears throat> find that to be a blessing to be able to share um, my faith or the Bible, or the Word of God with others that are in the faith. As well as I often wear a t-shirt that says something that might spark conversation about Jesus and why I believe that he is the answer to all of our situations. But I was in the parking lot waiting for the uh, meeting to start. I was early as usual. <clears throat> I was having a hard time catching my breath. Not uncommon when I'm exercising or out golfing or something, but at that point in time, it was a little unusual that I was having a hard time breathing. And I could not, uh, I went through my breathing exercises. I'm familiar with that. And I just couldn't get my breath at all, so I, I just, I realized I was in trouble physically. I felt like this was a clear sign of possibly a heart attack. So I, I, I looked at my options. Uh, this, you, you know when you've got an event that all of a sudden you realize you've got to cancel, you've got to reschedule. I'm rescheduling. How do I get to the hospital? <laughs> that was the priority at the time. And I knew there was an urgent care place just down the street. They would just call an ambulance sending me to the hospital. My doctor's a half a mile down the street and getting through that. How, how many here have sat in the doctor's office waiting to get attention? I kind of canceled that idea almost immediately. I thought about calling my pharmacist. I said, no, he's not going to help me. <laughs> he's too busy. So I, I just decided to drive myself to the hospital. Well, in going down there, I said, it's only two miles away. It wasn't that big a deal. I it's a six-lane highway, so I just turned over to the senior lane. Most people are on the senior lane in Florida. So, and I just drove into the hospital and got into the parking lot and walking up, wondering if I was going to make it. You know, I could see this. I could see the door, emergency, and uh, there was there was they had valet parking, but the person was gone. And so, so I just said, "Well, we'll do it the hard way," and I just kept kept walking up there. And when I uh, walked in, I finally says to the, uh, right to the first person I met there, I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> and he said, turn around, that man will talk to you right now. And they put wires on my chest and sent me into surgery. And they did a preliminary surgery to make sure that the, the blockage, there was a heart, uh, it was, this the hospital was known for their, uh, their heart care. So <clears throat> I, I, I tell you that because... Life doesn't always go as, as you plan. And I, I, I found myself in the hospital waiting for about five or six days before they actually did the open heart surgery. They did it on Friday and I was out on Monday and I've got one of those famous zippers. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. 
it, it's, it's just sort of sealed. But, uh, and the raspy voice has come from the intubation. So I'm still recovering, and uh, someone f from the family of the Bridge Community Church said that I was a miracle. And I believe that, and I believe that word was spoken to me to remind me of the fact that our lives are in God's hands. And in so many ways, there might seem like it's a normal day. No day is normal. Every day is a day where we need the presence of God in our life to deal with the little things as well as the big things. And I believe God wants to wake up his church to realize that sometimes we can get into the motions of just the, the busy activities of what routines we have found ourselves in, like the routine of having a coffee with my buddies on that Friday. I never realized that it would turn into a life and death situation. And in some respects, I think we have to realize that a, a lot of what we do impacts our, our world in a very positive or even sometimes negative way in representing Jesus. Because you have all been, whether you realize it or not, you have all been deputized into becoming a witness for Jesus Christ in every little ordinary way of life that you are on. I found out you could be a witness on the golf course. I'm not embarrassed about that. People will witness how you handle the tough stuff. They'll witness you in the sand trap. They'll witness you when the ball goes in the swamp. They'll witness you when you drop the ball into the hole and get a par or birdie or eagle. I only got one eagle in my whole life, and uh, it was a sick bird. <laughs> Jesus speaks his word to us today in, in John chapter 16. I believe that God speaks to us every day, and he wants us to hear his word, and I pray that we have been in his word every day. We, we have found one of the refreshing devotionals called Jesus Calling to be one of those items that have really been an encouragement to us through a missionary who spoke her testimony of Jesus speaking to her. I would like to have you stand with me. We'll just read one verse as we read together John 16 and 33. So I want to ask you the question, what has happened to our peace. What has happened to our peace? Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Heavenly Father, as we share the word together in these familiar words, but so much more pertinent as we see the circumstances surrounding us, I pray your blessing upon us as we open our eyes to see and our heart to receive what your Holy Spirit has for us in this day and we share from your word. We ask your help and blessing today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. What struck me the most after surgery was the, the need for breath. My chest could barely move. And of course, you need to expand your diaphragm in order to breathe. Your lungs don't suck things in, your, your diaphragm does. And the little tiny breaths, that's all I could take, little tiny breaths, almost, almost frightening in the sense that, why can't I open my lungs and breathe in? And the song we sang today, that my breath, may I bring praise to you. Jesus has spoken, 
He spoke in his word, and we're privileged to have the word and to hear what Jesus has spoken to the church. And he speaks it over and over again to his church, not only just once to that early church, but to the last generation of which we might be, to speak again. I've told you these things. And if you go back and look at what he's speaking about, he's referring to leaving them and, and what they might be going through and the difficulties of life. And Jesus says, I want to remind you that what I bring to you in the midst of the struggle is the most amazing peace that can come from the heart of the Father to us, no matter how big the mountain might be or how tall the wall might seem or how we might find ourselves with the enemy surrounding us. I can't imagine the Christians in Afghanistan right now huddling together in their little churches. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to not get into trouble. I don't want to get kicked out. But can you imagine what it is like to huddle in, 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 in fear? And it is my prayer as I hear reports coming out. Pastors are saying, we're strong in faith. We're standing together. We know we might be martyrs for Jesus, but we're not going to give up. We're going to stand true. And the cost and the price that they might pay for their faith not only might not just be their life, but family and children and, and possessions of which probably have little value in them right now. So Jesus speaks in this last time to the church in Afghanistan. I'm speaking peace into your heart no matter if the world is falling down around you. Now I know some days in our life it can feel like the world is falling down around us. While I'm in the hospital, <laughs> they said, you need to call your wife. Sounded like an ominous challenge. You need to call your wife. Sure. <laughs> I called the work number where she was, and I said to the person that got the call, I need to speak to Ruth Griffin, and I need to speak to her now. And you know, it's interesting how you, the tone of voice and the words and how you say it. She didn't know who I was, but she says, yes, sir. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're given this bad news and you're helpless, it feels like everything is crumbling around you. Jesus wants to speak to us in these times. I'm telling you these things so that you may have peace. That's where the church needs to live, no matter whether we stand before the firing squad or before the simple little tasks of our daily living. I, uh, peace, yeah. Sometimes I see, I see people worrying about things. I, don't, I never worry. I'm just sometimes concerned, but I never worry. You know I'm lying, don't you? And Jesus is saying, you know, I need you to be hearing my voice. I'm speaking peace to you, and I'm going to bring you through. That was the word of God in the hospital. I'm with you, Al, and I'm going to bring you through. Fear was not once on my mind when I saw the knife coming. I never saw the knife coming. They had me out before then. <laughs> but it's interesting how all of a sudden, you know, that your, your world is totally new now and all the lights are flashing and these people in these gowns and masks and they look like they're from outer space and they're all coming at you if, you know, with different tasks and they all had jobs to do and then all of a sudden, peace. Peace. <laughs> oh, I volunteered one time back uh, years ago as a probation officer. 
I was just trying to think of how, how me as a pastor in a small little church in Airdrie, Alberta, nobody walks through the door on purpose, you know, unless it's um, looking for food or something. But generally speaking, they can't find a church. And so I decided to get out of the church office as much as I could and became a probation officer as a volunteer. I don't know how long that program lasted. I may have ruined it for him. <laughs> but I had this one man named Tom, and he... I'll, re- I'll never forget him. He was an old. I was a young pastor. He was an older man. It's kind of tough when you feel like I'm just in my 30s and he's old like you. <laughs> older, I mean, older. And I kind of knew his history. And Ergy at that time wasn't a very big town. It's now a good-sized city. I knew where to find him. I walked from the courthouse where we would meet and down to the, the bar. I, I walked into the bar. That was my first time ever in that bar. <laughs> and he was the only guy sitting, uh, having a drink, and, which was a no-no for him. I mean, he was already in trouble with me. <laughs> so I got up on the bar stool beside him. and I mean, we're talking 11 o'clock in the morning. There was no customers in there. And uh, he looks at me, and he just kind of apologizes and whatever. And I try to, uh, I try to speak some words of wisdom, but I, never, I will never forget what he said. He said, Al, I just want to have some peace. I just want to find some peace. And he's looking at his beer and looking at me, and he knows there's no peace. There's no peace for him in that glass of beer. It only meant trouble for him. I believe that the the reason that struck me was I I never heard a sinner really make that kind of confession that they really were wanting in their heart a peace. They, they, that, maybe that was the central kind of a, a, a appetite for the world. They really, truly want to be able to have all of the, 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 the cries and the screams and the demands and, and the requirements that somehow they could just find a place where they could find peace. Jesus says... In me, you will find that peace in me. Jesus is speaking to the church today and said, listen, it's not going to be coming to you. Peace will not be coming through the government programs. Peace does not come through having a military bigger than the enemy. Peace does not mean Removal of all conflict in one's life. Peace means I've learned to trust in Jesus no matter what the circumstances are around me. That's where the peace is. I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, good for you, good for you. Peace. Most commentaries suggest that in that one word, that it was talking about all the possible blessings of Jesus poured out upon you. It looks like peace. <laughs> I'll tell you, when, the, when you're desperate and you turn to Jesus, I really believe that you will experience a deep-founded peace when you lean heavily upon the Lord Jesus. Peace. Last, uh, where's my water? Excuse me. Is this how he does it? A week ago Saturday, we uh, <clears throat> were invited. This, this was our second, I think it was second invite down to uh, feed the homeless people in uh, Calgary. So we're, we're there about uh, early afternoon, like one o'clock-ish, I think it is. 
12 o'clock ish, somewhere in that ballpark. We're feeding hungry people. We're feeding homeless people. <laughs> Sometimes we're feeding customers who were visiting Calgary and they don't know what the lineup is. They think it's a free pancake breakfast or somebody. So they jump in line until they hear the preaching. And the preaching is going on all the time as they're lining up. So about, I don't know, about 100 people came through the line this last week. A week ago, Saturday. And it's, uh, we, we give out clothing as well. So a lot of donations have been given as well as food has been donated. And the police are there sometimes. And they, they can be rowdy and they can have their moments of fighting because most of them in that line are absolutely destitute. They have none of the comforts that you have. They don't lie in a bed in a nice, comfortable, warm home. They don't have a nice soft mattress under their bodies. They're in some cardboard box or something that they've been able to put together. This is Calgary, Alberta, Canada, one of the richest provinces in Canada until the government takes them in. <laughs> Could you cancel that last little comment? You know? So we're going through this line and this this young girl, I would say she was 20. She looked like she was 40, but I would say she was 20, and she, she gave no eye contact. She was, at, she was near the end of the line. She was kind of late getting there, and they kind of know where the food is. I can't make conversation with her. She's not listening. She's dirty. Either she's been pushed down in the dirt and beaten, or she slept in the dirt because her back was just covered in dirt. I wanted to go over and dust it off. Like, you know. She got through the, she didn't even wait. She found a tray of cupcakes. Uh, she ate the whole tray, just spooned it in. And she found a place to sit down on a bench on the street. She was obviously stoned and not able to have a conversation with humanity. She was desperate, hungry. Oh, I finally went over and I, I dusted off her back. She was leaning over eating. I dusted off her back. It was so just, I mean, we're talking grains of sand and dirt and pebbles just ingrained in her body. And I, she didn't even know I was doing it. In Jesus' name. Oops. One of the workers, as she laid down on that bench, she had her head on this cold iron railing. Someone got some clothes out of the van that we'd been given away, rolled them up a pillow, and she lifted her head just enough to put the pillow underneath her. What could I give her? I gave her food. Bless her. She needed peace. She was desperately running, looking, hoping. And the gift I could give to her is to pray for her throughout this last week. That's all she could receive. Because I believe that without God intervening, that person won't be living long here. Desperately in need. I wanted to take her home. And I wanted to take her home and, and give her to one of you. Take her into your home. Love on her. Clean her up a little bit. Put some food in her stomach. Let her sleep in a nice bed. Let her use the shower and the laundry. She had nothing, absolutely nothing. And it's the cry, I feel God wants us to see the needs that are around us and recognize that in this troubled world, we are not to be oblivious to the fact that God has a ministry for us to do. That we in our peace share that blessing around our communities and even into the, the world around us and how we can bring a family from Africa, how we can bless a, a family in Afghanistan and, and, and in Haiti and El Salvador. God says, 
why don't you just start where you are and love on people, your neighbors. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. The scripture says, I have overcome the world. John 16, 1 speaks of the fact that the reason he's speaking this is he said, I don't want you to fall away because it's hard. I've told you these so that you will not fall away. I hear a baby crying. Isn't that a nice sound? Oh, my goodness. I love that. I hope she's... <laughs> I, I just love hearing kids in church. I just think that is such a sweet sound. I don't care. It doesn't disturb me at all. It gets me off track of my sermon, but... The, doesn't bother me at all. Jesus said, all this I've told you so that you will not fall away. I don't want you to fall away. I want you to stay on track. You've been called to do a work of ministry. And you must not deviate from the very purpose of which you have been saved. You're saved by grace through faith. And that's not from you. That's a gift of the Father. And I've, I've, this salvation is so that you might do the works that I've planned for you long ago, I've planned for you to do. I so desperately want that girl's name so I can say I'm praying for her. Julie, or is it Sally, or is it Betty, or is it, I don't know what her name is, but Jesus. Bless that girl. And You know, while we're here, I don't have COVID. Must be the wind. <laughs> While we're up here, we didn't, we didn't, it wasn't easy to get up here this year. It was a little more complicated than normal. But anyway, we, uh, <clears throat> my, my neighbor called us. We've been really working on our neighborhood. So we got, we got this uh, lady praying and this family praying and this family praying for us. It was really good. And these guys, not so much. Understanding that they might see me on YouTube. I need to be careful. Call me, and he said, I just want to make sure that you're doing okay. <laughs> well, he's, we've just gotten to share fellowship together, so to speak, because whenever his garage door is open, it's, I can go in and visit, because that means he's smoking in the garage. Most people's garages in Florida you can't get into, by the way. But anyway, because they're full of stuff. All these retired people come down to Florida and they get a garage and they fill it up with all the stuff they bring down from up north, my assessment. When I first got to know him well enough to sit down as he's smoking his marijuana and I'm sitting there looking at it and <laughs> just kind of being glad to sit down and love on this guy. He says, thank you for not preaching to me. I know you're a preacher. Thank you for not preaching I think that's a compliment. I'm not absolutely sure about that. But he says, I'm dying of cancer, Al. Stage four brain cancer, and I don't have a lot of time, but I know I'm going to die, and I know I'm going to hell. <laughs> I'm thinking, not on my watch. <laughs> no, sir. We're going to make some moves here, moves of faith, trouble. I think trouble sometimes can guide us to Jesus. <laughs> Difficulty can make us look again that that doesn't work. Maybe I need to shine and share for, for Jesus' sake. That's the place I need to be. Because trouble in the world is going to always be there. Jesus said in 14, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. It's my peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives but do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. <laughs> wow. The world is full of trouble. And Jesus is the center of our peace. Be of good cheer. Be encouraged. Let the church really shine in these difficult days. This is the time to for the world to see the true heart of Jesus in his believers. I really do 
uh, I don't mean to disturb anybody with this comment, but I, I hope it does. I'm so against religion. I'm so in favor of Jesus. There is such a difference between the two. Religion is the form. It's the practice. is the ritual. is the routine. is is the counterfeit so often of the true reason we should be living alive and, and bright and shining for Jesus. This is the day the church truly needs to shine. I think that it's one of those things that the world pays attention to, that they'll see the peace of Jesus in our heart, and they want to talk to us about it. How can you be so together, so peaceful in the midst of a COVID crisis? How can you be so at peace when the world seems to be crushing and crashing in on us? Well, the world's not crushing and crashing in on me. Jesus has surrounded me. I'm safe. The worst thing they can do to me is kill me. Ha! That's the best thing they could do to me. Are you kidding? This world has no hooks on me. I've, I've been sold out for Jesus. and I've got to make sure I'm telling you the truth. The world has no hooks on me. I say that because I'm confessing it, because sometimes Jesus puts his finger, well, what about this? Would you give that up? Oh, absolutely. Nothing's holding on to me. So Jesus, he's giving me things, and he's taking things away. And the world comes in, and they're astonished. How can you be so peaceful? Even after the surgery, people say, how did you get out of the hospital? I said, well, do you know my Jesus? That's how. You know, if I didn't get out of the hospital, do you know my Jesus? Sweet, sweet. He visits me every day. He's in the room. He's here. He's the healer and the present lover. He's the one who lives through no matter what the circumstances are for us. Jesus brings my peace to me. Paul's confession to the church in the 2 Thessalonians 3.16. I love the, not, not that the references and scriptures are inspired. Someone organized with the books and the numbers and the chapters and the verses and kind of decided where it breaks. That's not always accurate. But I, when, some, when there's a verse like 3.16, I kind of remember that because John 3.16 and these other verses 16. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Paul says to the church in Thessalonica, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. <laughs> the Lord be with you all. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that beautiful? It's like a benediction to the church. You can leave here now. You're going into the world, but trust me, the peace will be given to you in all, in all times, in every way. This is what the Lord wants to do in his church. This is how the church shines for the world, to the world. This is how the witness is clear. The Lord is alive. And he's living in his church. It's, it's not religion. It's not counterfeit. It's the real, genuine presence of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. The peace of Christ reigns and rules through his church. That means you. So when this young girl, if I ever can speak to her and she can have eye contact with me, and she ever asks me the question, where is the church? I want to say the church is standing right in front of you right now, ready to love you the way that would bring glory and honor to Jesus. You are the church. It's you leave this place from the building. Praise God, he's given you a building. This is a miracle too. But this is not the church. This is just concrete and drywall and paint. That's all it is. <laughs> Except that it will be set apart for the purpose of bringing glory to God in his ministry. But the true church, we dis we, when do we quit? In three minutes, Right? <laughs> when, 
when we dismiss our gathering, the church leaves the building. The peace of Christ goes living through the saint who walks out of here. Everyone that knows the Lord Jesus who has been born again and life transformed, you leave this building because you are the church and you go wherever you go. And the church goes with you. That's why where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst of them. That's we gather together. I should have known. I should have known. The symptoms were all there. I could have prevented the heart attack. I should have known. The church needs to wake up and recognize the symptoms. We are in the last days. The end is coming soon. And you have an assignment to glorify God until he comes. You should know that. Amen? Thank you. Stand with me. Heavenly Father, as we close in this moment together, we pray that we've heard not only the word that you have spoken through Jesus, but the word of peace that is here for all who believes on Jesus. And our assignment is clear. It's not clear at this moment who and what and where and how, but the purpose will be clear. We are the witness to bring peace into our world. The government has no answers. The military has no power. It's all in your hands, Lord, and the church. I pray that the church is awake, alert, aware of the call of God upon their lives, and that they have a purpose and mission when they leave this place. And as Paul speaks to us. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. May the Lord be with you all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.